and welcome to the Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting on February 11th, 2003. If we could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, We do have one adjustment to the agenda tonight, and under new business, we will add E um, for a conversation about a mock trial trip um, that is coming up. Approval for the January school board meetings. Um, are there any comments or questions? Or um, then we will move on to um, our comments from our two high school students. One high school student. <laughs> yeah, I really couldn't make it today, but sure. This hair, I'm sorry about the hair. It's for a team spirit. I'm on the swim team, so we got the whole team to dye our hair. That's why. Um, just to let you know, all the sports teams are pretty close to the championships. Everybody's doing very well on um, track, basketball, getting ready for playoffs, swimming. We have ours next week, um, so we're going to shave all the hair off anyway. But and then, so all the teams are doing well. Um, that helps with school spirit. School spirit's going really well. We had Winterfest activities, which was kind of like bringing um, another fall homecoming into the winter, kind of take give us a break from all the hard classes and midterms and everything. So. Uh, some of the activities that we had were uh, competition between the classes for a trophy and to get points for each category. First category was hallway decorations. Every class uh, decorated their hallway extensively, except for the senior class. Um, <laughs> we didn't really take part in that, but the juniors and sophomores had really massive decorations and painted their halls and stuff, so they had a fun time with that. Um, some of the other stuff we did was um, were, we had Ironman relay competitions which were running around outside with skis and snowshoes and pulling people on sleds. It was pretty cool. And we got to watch that during the day, um, so that was exciting. They also had snow sculptures, which gave people an opportunity to show their artistic ability. And um, at the end of the day, during F period, or actually, I think it was the E period, um, anyway, at the end of the day, during a couple periods, we got to go to the gym and at an assembly with the whole school and to see students, school, the faculty, and basketball. For the basketball, you had to wear socks and mittens, so it was kind of fun. It was just really lighthearted, but got everybody riled up for their own class. And kind of helps with the school. So, and there was ping pong there, too. Um, just to let you know about some of the volunteer activities at the high school, there's, very, there's quite a few. The volunteer club's doing a lot. So the SEC kind of finds it difficult for um, to find new activities to do because the classes in the volunteer club are already doing so many. So we're doing a lot for the community. I think it's important that we keep doing a lot for the community. Also SDPs, we just, for seniors, um, senior transition project, they kind of get us ready for next year. we are more involved with the community. You have to give something back to the community. We just uh, decided our projects today. For example, I'm going to work at Senator Collins' office and uh, hopefully see what I can do to help the constituents here. But another thing for volunteer activities, uh, this Valentine's Day coming up, they're offering um, to sell roses during lunch to help unfortunate children pay for surgery with uh, like the phonies on their faces. So I think that's really helpful. So it's a good cause, and hopefully a lot of people donate to that. Um, the last thing I wanted to touch on was this new drug policy. Seems to be going well. We really haven't had that many incidences since uh, December or early January, so I think it's working, and I think students are kind of understanding what's acceptable and what's not. You know, the bounds of the administration. So, any questions? Any questions or comments, Phil? Okay, thank you, Aaron. Congratulations to the mock trial team. <laughs> now we'll hear from the middle school, Elise and Elise. Uh, 
Um, with the fifth and sixth grade, um, they had a roller skating social about two weeks ago, and um, the student council, seventh and eighth grade student council members went and helped chaperone with some of the teachers. And both of the, the grades were pretty full, and they seemed to have a fun time. Um, the sixth graders, um, for sixth grade, a lot of kids um, started indoor track <coughs> this week because it's the first year they can participate in a school sport. Um, for seventh and eighth grade, grades close on March 7th, and the trimester ends on the 8th. We also had um, career day, which seemed to be a big hit. There are 23 presenters, and this was a great experience. Um, people learned a lot about the different jobs that are available and what exactly they are. Everything's going great in both grades. Um, the seventh grade, they're using their laptops more and more, and this continues to have an amazing impact in learning results. And some students are pilot testing the new image, and we're one in six schools that can do this. And they're testing it before Apple, the computer company, mm -hmm. releases the software to the general public. And I think there'll be more about that later. In the eighth grade, most of us who take Spanish had our interviews for the high school. And high school recommendations come out on the 25th. On February 25th, 26th, and 27th, we're going to Augusta to the State House. We hope to see um, the legislature in session because most of us are most of us are <laughs> studying econ economics. <clears throat> we also have the MEAs on the 3rd and 4th and 5th of March. For sports, swimming and indoor track started yesterday. The swimming team is bigger than last year, and their first meets after vacation. The indoor track team is just as popular and humongous, and they're very enthusiastic about that. Um, basketball is halfway through the season, and ski season is finishing up this week. We have the championships on Saturday. Um, for entertainment, there was the Valentine's Day dance this past Friday. Um, it went well, and there were carnations given to each girl at the door as they walked in, and there were also extras sold at the snack bar for people who want to buy extra ones. And each boy got two chocolate kisses at the door also. Um, the play this year is called A Middle School Musical. And Mr. Price, an eighth grade teacher, Mrs. Yokobaskis and Mrs. Ye Egan um, wrote it this year with some student input also. And that started today with the first practice. Then there was the variety show last Tuesday. There was singing, dancing, piano, violin, harp, and comedy from the MCs. And that went very well. Any questions? Okay, thank you. We'll move on to communications. Does I anyone? Just wanted to make note of some information that's in your packet. Um, one is we are venturing into a new uh, collective bargaining format this year. Um, it's called collaborative based bargaining. And the whole premise around this sort of collective bargaining is, is to get away from the us versus them mentality. Um, we all we list the issues from both sides, and then we work through them as, as they are problems for the, for the school district. Um, we try to come to cons a consensus decision on how to solve those problems. Um, so this is a pilot. This is something we're trying this year. The uh, Teachers Association is looking forward to it, and I think it will be something that, as a district, we can uh, profit from and not make it a, a negative type of experience. Also, uh, you have a communication from um, community resources, volunteer services, and I just think it's, it's amazing to note the, the amount of equipment, supplies, and those kinds of things that we, we do have donated um, to the school district. And we do have a couple of letters of resignation, um, Joanne Lee, and uh, middle school music teacher, and Richard Pine, a uh, bus driver. Thank you. Um, and now comments from the public. Okay, then we will move on to recognition tonight. We have quite a few people here. Um, first, the mock trial team, um, which are high school students between the ninth and the 12th grade, who just won the state championship. And later on in tonight's meeting, we will be talking about them going to um, the Nationals representing um, our state, which is really exciting. And we also have the 
um, I team from the uh, seventh grade who put on a presentation for us um, a few weeks ago to the town council and did a terrific job. So. This is exciting for us because we usually don't get this kind of a crowd at um, school board <laughs> meetings. So, but feel free, those of you that are being recognized, um, feel free to stay because it's a, it'll be, I'm sure, an exciting meeting. Um, but once you receive your awards, we will take a break, and if you want to leave, that's that's quite all right. Um, we will begin by recognizing um, nine students who were part of the I team that was involved with a. a very innovative and creative project utilizing the laptops. And as Marie said, um, we kind of gave them a charge. And uh, working with um, Marie, and I know Elaine worked with the group, um, and, and Holly Smivog and uh, Susan Steinman worked with the group, and Gary Lenoy, um, really created quite a presentation, uh, very professional, that, that we think we will be able to utilize as we uh, move further on into looking at our building project and what we need to do. So we are very appreciative and would like to recognize each one of those, those students. <coughs> I'll read the first certificate and then call up the rest of the students. This is a certificate of recognition presented to Ashley Barnett. This certificate is presented by the Cape Elizabeth School Board in recognition of outstanding achievement as a member of the Cape Elizabeth Middle School I team project build. Ashley, are you here? Simmons. <laughs> Kirsten Brown. <laughs> Tom Michaud. Morgan Alden. <laughs> Andrew Nelson. <laughs> Nick Whiteman. Charlie Governali. <laughs> and, oh, we have for one of the advisors, and I don't know, Holly, Holly Smeva. Holly couldn't make it tonight. She and Gary Lenoy. the mock trial team. Um, I know the mock trial team has uh, been very close for the last uh, couple of years anyway, probably 
even goes further back than that, that they were able to get very close and within, I think, just points of winning a, a state championship. Um, and this year, they were able to accomplish that. Um, and in an academic type of activity, um, such as mock trial, it's really great to see that our students and so many of them that are involved are able to achieve at that level. And uh, as a school district, we're, we're very, very proud of you. The, um, I'll do the advisors last. <coughs> this is a certificate of recognition presented to, and the first one is Matt Kramer. This certificate is presented by the Cape Elizabeth School Board in recognition of outstanding achievement as a member of the Cape Elizabeth High School mock trial team, first place winners in the mock trial state final. Matthew. Amanda Tuttle. Mary Catherine Hubner. Mary Cox. Getting ready for the Nationals, probably. Uh, Brianna Babbitt. <laughs> Lindsay Duffy. <laughs> Carlin Geyer. Julia Elliott. <laughs> Rossi Kinney. Spencer Scott. <laughs> Kristen Ha. Chris Babick. <laughs> Beth Kayata. <laughs> Nick Klein. Sam Roos. Spencer Hoffman. Rebecca Taylor. Lucas Schubert. Marianne Chapman. Thank you. Rob Schatz. Zeke Williams.
Victoria Currier. Eric Robinson. Greg Robinson. Lauren Crotu. Megan Tarling. We have left the um, three individuals, and we're very fortunate that we um, have two volunteers that work with the group, along with Dick Mullen, the advisor. Uh, and we would also like to recognize them, and it's John Chapman. Failing. And advisor to the group, Dick Mullen. Uh, thank you. Uh, there's a lot of talk uh, these days of extending school years and year-round school and that kind of thing. I think this is an excellent example of taking 27 students who work evenings, uh, weekends, vacations, and extend their school day in a very academic uh, way. Uh, this is a program that has been around for uh, eight years at Cape Elizabeth High School. It was built uh, by volunteers to begin with, and we always like to think of those people who have gone before us, including Nancy Ziegler and Terry Garmy and uh, Dave Clucci, who were instrumental in getting it off the ground and then pass it over uh, to uh, me and to the uh, coaches that I've had this year the privilege of working with. So we're very pleased uh, with the support you've given us. We think this is a tremendous buy uh, for a school to have these uh, quality volunteers help to turn out this excellent program, and we hope you <coughs> send us on to the nationals. Thank you. I'd like to thank all of the recipients for taking the time out to be here this evening, and congratulations, all of you. And we're going to take can we take um, a few minutes for those of you who want to leave. Uh, feel free to do that, and then we'll continue with our meeting. Thank you.
Okay, if we can continue, we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Um, under the, just a few items under the future direction plan, um, in your packet you also received uh, a copy of the Paycheck Press. Um, one interesting thing I just would like to mention that this summer, um, Gary Lenoy, in conjunction with Sarah Simmons, is looking at creating a school district summer professional development academy. Um, so you'll hear more about that, but those are the kinds of things that through that professional development committee and our future direction plan that we're looking to create. Um, we're continuing to work on our local assessments, um, supervision and evaluation team, and all the future direction planning teams will continue to meet. And right after the vacation, I will be meeting with um, two different consultants who will be helping us to plan an event scheduled for the fall of the year where, for those of you that were here, uh, when we created our long-range plan, we brought um, about 250 people together um, as the beginning of that process. This will be kind of our third year into it review, and we'll be hoping to have um, a lot of data, a lot of information to kind of evaluate where we've been, to see if the mission and the vision still works, um, to, see, to take a look at what our goals are, and if we need to revise and rethink any of that plan. And, and this would include parents, community members, uh, community leaders, um, very similar to the last event that we had. Um, but we're looking to have someone from the outside facilitate that. So you'll be hearing more about that as far as the future direction plan is concerned. Um, the Education Foundation um, is in their second grant cycle. Grant applications have gone out to the schools. Um, I think it's about ten or eleven thousand dollars. That's the. I think the first round was about fifteen thousand. The foundation um, this time um, in their grant cycle, they were able to raise a significant amount of money, and in their first grant cycle, gave away everything they had. Um, their goal now is, whenever they have a grant cycle, that they want to take a percentage of whatever their funds are and, and begin to build the endowment. Um, they will be, they have interviewed and I think are in the process of hiring a capital campaign person and their goal is to kick off a capital campaign um, in the fall. Um, they've also expanded their board of directors to 24 members and they have several other subcommittees that uh, number anywhere from 10 to, to 12 members. So I think that it's just grown tremendously and they're probably, I'd say, 30 to 40 people who, who really are involved in some way, whether on a subcommittee or as a member of the board of directors. Um, but they're keeping to their goal where they would like to see eventually an endowment of about a, of a million, one million to two million dollars. Um, right now they have about 11,000, but um, they're on their way. <laughs> uh, and then the last item on my report actually will be taken by Gary, and that's the annual technology committee report. Gary Illinois. It's uh, probably a tradition that I do some kind of electronic presentation. I'm going to continue with that tradition, and I'm not trying to show up the principles. I only have to do a report once a year with, as opposed to every school board meeting, so please don't be offended. Um, the annual technology report, about a year ago, I came in front of you, and uh, 
the big part of this report is going to be uh, what's happening at the middle school with, with the, the, the <laughs> laptop project, the, the Mil Milty project. Not to neglect the other schools, things have happened in those too, uh, but that's been a big uh, focus of our work this year. So I wanted to bring you up to date on that. Um, here's kind of my outline, some updates from the last budget cycle, show you some of the things that uh, the budget purchased and, and some of the improvements that we've made. Uh, MILTI, MLTI, Main Learning Technology Initiative. Uh, I'll spend a great deal of time about that. Talk a little bit about our ATM classroom. Uh, we're in a, a debate right now about a student school information system and how we're going to deal with that and how we're going to track learning results database and some of those things. You'll see more in the budget information about this, but I just thought I'd raise the, uh, the issue, update things on staff development and some continuing issues that we have in technology. This year was the year of the middle school, and the middle school got the updates. The way that the technology plan has worked, the computer replacement cycle, uh, we basically have uh, upgraded a, year, a school a year, and since we have three, three schools in the district, it's a three-year cycle. It was the middle school's turn this year. We update, updated the computer labs. That's where we generally put the newest stuff, the latest and greatest goes there, where, where students are, where it gets a heavy use, spends three years in the lab, and then it goes out into the classrooms. Um, those are still good computers, at least for the, the fourth and fifth year. When we start to get to the sixth year, then they start to get tired and um, generally need to be replaced. So we're working on close to a six-year or generally a six-year life cycle of computers. Um, that doesn't always work that way, but that's what the, the plan has, has pushed forward and moved forward, and that's generally what we've done. Other updates that happened this year, we had a, a Novell server at the high school that was causing us some problems and some freezing and things like that, and we converted to a, to a Microsoft product, and surprisingly enough, Microsoft software like gets along better with Microsoft servers, and things have been much better down there. Uh, so we've had less problems and less issues with that. I think uh, both students, staff have appreciated that. So that move, even though it was a lot of work, has really solved a lot of our problems. We did update the library computers. We're moving to uh, a Windows 2000 operating system standard. Uh, unfortunately, right now, we have a lot of computers in the high school that can't take that. So we need to upgrade some of those. And thanks to Jeff's creative budgeting, we ended up with a, a wireless lab because we did away with the math lab at the high school that needed to be uh, taken over for classroom space. Uh, we've gone with wireless mobile labs, one or two 10 station labs. And that's been somewhat successful. Um, and we hope to expand that in the future. We did some updates to the networks itself and um, had added some color printing, network printing at each one of the school levels. So each school did get some benefits out of this, even though the, the emphasis or the focus was the middle school this year. Focus next year will be another school, the high school. Um, the Main Learning Technology Initiative. This has been a big piece of our work this year. People think it's a, it's a technology initiative. It's about the laptops, but it's, it's really a, a learning initiative. Provided iBooks to all of our seventh grade students and staff. And for us, that meant 160 student iBooks and approximately 18 staff iBooks. The program, if it is to continue, it, and it looks like it will continue into the second year, we don't know Beyond that, what will happen, but uh, 160 more iBooks for eighth graders, well, we'll cover our seventh and eighth grade next year. So we'll have uh, that many more pieces of hardware in that school for next year. This is the person that uh, brought this all about. Demonstrate the power of one-to-one -one computer access in a way that will transform education. And we're starting to see Bev Bisbee, who was our lead teacher at the middle school, has said, we finally have gotten beyond the, the maintenance and the management stage. We've got all the nitty gritties done. We've got policies done. Now, we're, now we can concentrate on seeing what kinds of things can it do in the classroom. And we're starting to see some real good things. And you'll see some of that a little later in the presentation. Uh, this, what I'm going to do is kind of give you a little history, a little guideline as to what happened. Starting back in June, we ended up with the, the staff iBooks. They, they arrived, um, unfortunately, after school had let out. So I spent a week 
trying to get them all configured, installed software. I uh, didn't want to just give them to staff. We wanted to give them to staff with a little bit of training. So we came up with the idea of lunch with the laptops. And it was like, I think the last Friday in June, we got the seventh grade teachers and some of the special teachers back. And because this was strictly voluntary on their part, but they came back, we fed them a pizza lunch, and we distributed the laptops and gave them about an hour, an hour and a half of training. And I think because we did this, they felt more comfortable taking them home for the summer and working on them and attending their, their training sessions. So I think schools that didn't do a little bit of training ended up with some problems. And I think this was to our benefit. And all it cost me was a few, you know, some pizza money. In July, one of the things that I didn't do, I was trying to be conservative in the, in the budget. We had a, a tough budget last year, and we're probably going to have a tougher budget this year. I didn't budget for carts. I didn't budget for storage. I wasn't, at first, convinced that they were necessary. And then as time rolled on, I found that they were more and more necessary. So we didn't have the money to build them. Um, carts, commercial carts, cost, oh, eight, 800 to to $1,000 a piece, and we'd need them for classrooms. Our maintenance staff, I, sh I showed them some plans, and they actually modified the plan and actually made a better plan, but the maintenance staff built these for us over the summer. Um, they, each one of the carts holds 12 laptops, and uh, so we needed two per room, but there's room in the bottom for storage of projectors or speakers or other kinds of things. They're lockable, there's power strips in them so that they can be charged, they're, they're secure, they're on wheels, so if I need to roll things all to one central point to do updating the computers, uh, I can do that. And we'll probably roll them all together in one central storage place for the summer. So they worked out really well, and uh, I've got a commitment by the maintenance staff that they'll do the same thing for our uh, eighth grade classrooms. These cost us about $300 a piece, as opposed to the, uh, you know, the $800 to $1,000. In August, the student iBooks arrived. I think it was 32 cases of those boxes there. Each, each uh, box had five computers in it. I think that works out mathematically to 160. Um, here they are. Now what? Well, we had to, do, we had to get them ready. Didn't, again, didn't want to just give them to students. What we do is we, uh, I build a master computer and we clone it. And cloning is OK with computers. Um, we added Microsoft Office. And we added our local settings, like printers and uh, ways to connect to the internet. So spent some time doing those. Uh, and everyone pitched in to help. We, we wanted to get these computers out as early as possible in the school year. And because everyone pitched in, we were able to do that. And you see the bottom, uh, bottom right has the, the laptops, all in their cases with their little labels for students. They're all assigned to each student, ready for the seventh graders. And at the beginning of September, we had laptop day. I think that was the first Friday uh, of school. Second Friday? OK, second Friday of, of, of school, uh, the Friday after Labor Day. Uh, that happened to be a day that the seventh graders were taking some kind of a standardized test in the morning. So we thought where there was going to be somewhat of an interruption in the day, we'd, we'd interrupt uh, the rest of the day. And we'd make that our laptop day, and we would do to the students what we did with the teachers. We'd give the, the laptops out with some training. So we called them down. We used uh, Sarah Simmons's professional development center. That's where we did all the cloning. <laughs> called homerooms down a couple at a time and passed them out. I went over a little five-minute spiel, gave them some introduction, showed them how to use the carts, how to charge, those kinds of things. And then they, they got their laptops and went back to their homeroom. After lunch, they had chance to play with them in their homerooms a little bit, get acquainted with them. And then after lunch, we had like mini sessions where little 20 minute workshops where uh, myself and a bunch of the teachers gave them some orientation to some of the features of the laptops. So that was our laptop day. And that was very early for schools in the area. We're we were probably one of the first schools around in the area to get them out and into the students' hands that early. Um, here's a Here's a movie that our IT team put together. And I'll play this first, and then I'll tell you, explain about it.
the I team allows for some of this support to happen. So the I team is a big help to the teachers in the classroom. Teachers are finding it quite helpful to be teaching a new program or the laptop and I team members step right up to the line and say, may I help you with this? Or if they see a student having a problem with a particular uh, procedure, they'll go right over and call with their assistance. I wanted to introduce that before the thing started, but I clicked too, too fast. But the I-Team was a, an idea that I, I don't come up with many original ideas, but I think this was one of my original <laughs> ideas. It was, <laughs> and it was, uh, it was kind of out of panic. How am I gonna deal with 100 extra, 160 or 180 extra computers? And I've, I've known from in the past that small roadblocks can be, you know, turn into big roadblocks when it comes to uh, working with technology. I didn't want those little roadblocks to turn into big ones. And I figured if we could train a bunch of kids that might be willing to help out in the classrooms, they're there. I'm not going to have seven or eight people that can be in all the seventh grade classrooms, but the student's going to be there anyway. And a lot of them enjoy this stuff and we're willing to help out. Um, many schools have picked up on this idea and have developed teams like this on their own. So that was one of my original ideas. Um, They've been a great help to this whole implementation. They help with parent orientation nights. They, I mean, they'll do pretty much anything. We put this little movie together to, to demonstrate what we're all about. We actually we use it in a principal's conference. We've used it in several conferences just to kind of show what the I-Team is about. Uh, we learned quite a bit just putting this together. This is also an example of some of the stuff that you can do on the iBooks that the students have. This is nothing fancy, that's, a, that's the standard iBook that they have, uh, and that was all made on that with digital cameras and an old piece of software that's called iMovie that comes with it. So the, the scenes in the middle where you saw a lot of bunch of things happening in the classrooms, those are the things that are happening daily in there. Uh, so we're real pleased with, with the way things are going. The key team for implementation that we've discovered is 
having uh, there are three key people: the principal, Nancy Hutton, the lead teacher, Doug Bisbee, and then the tech lead, which just happens to be me. But if those three people seem to be working together, um, that's where the laptop project is having its success. If you've got a principal that's against it, you've got a technology person that's against it, you've got any one of those that are, you know, uh, not fully supportive of the program, that's where schools are having problems. But we've got a good team and we're working together, and I think that's why another reason why we're seeing these successes. Um, here's some things that, you know, there was, there was a lot of things that happened behind the scenes. We did have to develop guidelines, which you people um, passed. We offered, the state required us to have parent orientation <coughs> meetings. We had four of those. There is a Cape Milty resource site. I'm not going to take the time to go to it here, but if you link off the, uh, the main school website, you click on technology, you'll see Cape Milty resources. All of the documentation, all of the uh, take home procedures, all of that stuff is posted on the web. We've also made it kind of a help site. You know, my, my computer isn't charging. What can I do? Well, there's a little help page on there that some of the students have actually helped starting, uh, starting to put together some of these uh, web pages. We've gone through the optional insurance. We offered that. iBooks began to go home after October 21st, and that still was fairly early. They, I, I belong to a state association, and we just had a meeting in early January, and there were only a handful of school districts there that had actually let the iBooks go home yet. Uh, they were waiting for, unfortunately, we offered the, the insurance that uh, way back early, and then the state came out with a cheaper package. Wouldn't you know it? But we were, we were told that nothing was going to happen by the state level, so we took their advice and we just went with a, with a, a company that they recommended. And um, many other school districts waited, didn't know what they were going to do. And now they're, I think they're starting to let them go home uh, in January and February when the, their insurance kicks in. So that's where we are with that. Here's some uh, teacher observations about the program. Efficiency makes what used to take several days completed much quicker, instantaneous access to information. Uh, media that students are used to and have grown up with. You and I have grown up with the written word and, and writing and reading were important with us, but when, when they kicked off this program and Steve Jobs, the CEO of Apple, actually came to Portland, this was a, a point that he uh, brought up, that uh, kids are in a media generation and this is the tool that will allow them to do those kinds of things. Teachers are seeing more academic use, less games than at the beginning of the school year. Teachers including a tech component. Uh, kids seem to be more focused and engaged in, in the activities that they're doing. And then some you know, pluses and minuses. Re reduce talking. They do, however, act as a distraction. Teaching sometimes more enjoyable, sometimes more frustrating, uh, which probably is, is true anyway, whether the laptops were there or not. Mm -hmm. um, many things are happening to change teaching and learning. So these are all these are all comments by some of our staff locally from the laptops. Bev Bisbee has a, a nice report that she's put together uh, with a bunch of comments, kind of a mid-year report, and I think there'll be an end of the year report too. Moving on to other schools, the ATM classroom. We spent um, time getting that all up and running last year. Early in the year we had our first, what I would consider curriculum use of that, where we had a student uh, debate doesn't show up real well on there, but the, the screen is actually divided into quarters. And Cape Elizabeth was one quarter, but four schools represented there. I think it was Cape Thornton Academy, Yarmouth, someplace else. And Tom Allen and, is it Joyce? Uh, his, his opponent were on the, at one of the sites, and students from the schools took turns asking questions. So it was real live, real time. You're asking the questions right then and there. So that was kind of our first real academic use of that. Um, we've used it for many workshop sessions. Uh, there's even a citizen in town who's taking a course in Orono by going to our ATM room and just connecting to Orono. So we are making use of it, not to the fullest extent. The, the biggest drawback to actually scheduling courses is that all school schedules are different. So if we want to offer a course with Falmouth High School, unfortunately, the two schedules don't mesh, and um, those that makes the problems for us. But it is a valuable resource, and I think it will be used more and more. Staff development, we offered the Summer Technology Academy like we have for the past, I want to say, five years or so. 
i just counted things up today twenty seven different people twelve of them took multiple days we are going to combine that and make it instead of a technology academy we're just going to call it a cape academy and sarah simmons is going to offer have some offerings and we'll have some some of our standard technology offerings we had five staff members attend uh, mac leadership in yarmouth which is actually a five i do the the, the summer technology academy differently I have five different topics, so staff can take any one of the five days. They can take one day, two day. It, it's a single day type thing. MAC leadership, you're really committed to a five day, week long course. And we had five of our middle school staff attend that. Had some great interest already in, in asking about this summer. And we had many staff attend the, the, the MILTI training, which is part of the whole project. One of the things I neglected to say, along with the laptops, the MILTI project also provided a completely wireless uh, middle school for us. So you can walk around the middle school with a laptop and be connected to the network anywhere. So that whole building is wireless and it also provided staff development. So not only did it provide the hardware, but other things beyond that. This is the thing we're wrestling with right now, student information system. Uh, I think we're going to talk about it at our leadership team tomorrow. We currently have three systems in the district. There's, there's going to be some requirements that we're going to have to track learning results, and we're going to have to certify that our students have, have met learning results, and we're also going to have to export this data to the Department of Education. There's a lot of ifs and question marks right now. We, you know, we don't even know that the DOE doesn't even have their system yet, so we don't know how do you import or export into a system that we don't even know about yet. Um, but we're looking at keeping all of our options open. The the early technology plans, one of the original technology plans, called for us to have a standardized system, K-12, and we never really reached there. We backed off on that a while back, but it's, it's something that probably the learning results is going to uh, force us to do. So that's something we'll, we'll be looking at in the budget system. Always issues about upgrading older, older technology. Um, we've got a high school that we're running Windows 95, 98, 2000. We've got, and, and Mac. So we've got four different operating systems, different kinds of things. It, it's, a, it's a support nightmare. I, mean, I think if, we, if the budget goes through, if the requests go through as is, we can get that school all, all on one platform, uh, just like we did for the middle school this year. We get everyone on, on OS. Providing adequate support for users, both the technical support and the professional support. The technical stuff to make sure things are working but then the, the professional stuff to, to integrate it into the classroom. And we've got some things in the budget about that. There is, the MILTI project is great, but there is no doubt that there is an increased workload with that. Um, so that's, that's an issue. Disposal of older technology is also becoming an issue. I, I spent some money this year to get rid of that. Computers and, and monitors are considered hazardous waste. You can't just put those in the, in the landfill and in the trash. They have to be disposed of in a proper way. So that is becoming an issue. Uh, and it's something that we'll have to address. And I'm open to questions. Gary, I do have a question. <laughs> um, I was curious, uh, how much of the mobile labs being used in the high school? It's different from floor to floor. And actually, the pattern of use is just about the same as the opposite of what Gary and Jim probably expected to see the unit. Being used a whole lot on the second floor, right? It's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm.
scientific would love to have uh, what used to be the boons to the laptops every single period of the game work successfully with the controller. Uh, uh, Gary's Gary and Jim going to have to work very hard to try to make it work. Uh, there's some potential in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, He's also used from time to time. In fact, when That's good. <coughs> I have another question. Sure. Um, how much of the laptop's going home in the seventh grade? Because that was something we talked a lot about back in September. How is it going? How often how or how frequently? How often? Oh, wait, Gary, some kids take them home every single night. Yeah. And some kids took them home a lot in the beginning and now don't mm -hmm. as much. But um, there are some people, members of our IT team, they come on all the time. <coughs> uh, but also other kids who weren't on the IT. So it's kind of hard to say, Kathy. I would say that we have experienced when they first could take them home that a lot of people wanted to take them home. And then we got into kind of a place where they stopped doing it quite as much um, and now take them home when they need to. And then there are kids who just take them home quite a bit. So mm -hmm. it varies. And that's what the pilot schools experienced, too. At first, there, there was a, a big influx of taking them home every single day. And then they, you know, students finally realized if many of our students have computers at home, right, yeah. they'll, you know, they'll take them only when, only when they need to take them. Yeah. And that's, so that seems to be what's happening now. We've evolved to that state. And have you had to um, access the insurance very much? Have, have there been many? I haven't had a claim yet, although I may have one. Good. No, but I mean, those are, that's, those are things we spent a lot of time thinking through. Okay, thank you. I think it's fabulous. I'm jealous. I wish I was there. <laughs> Any other questions for Gary? That's it. Thank you, Gary. Um, actually, before we get to the principal's reports, I'm going to move one item in new business, the mock trial trip up. Um, and Jeff, were you going to speak on that or have someone else? I, I can very briefly, but uh, both John Chapman and Elaine Fallender are here, and they can probably actually answer questions in more detail if the board has more questions. Um, the opportunity that our students have right now, having won the state championship, as you heard about earlier, is to go to New Orleans in May uh, to represent the state of Maine in the national championships. Um, and I, gave, I, I sent to, I think you have in front of you, the basic details of what the trip would entail. It would be two, um, two school days missed, uh, May 9th and May 10th. Um, there is some fundraising involved, with, which there are plans for, but they're obviously holding off on, on the act, whatever action or indication that the board gives. Um, and the amount of money that, that they've calculated that they need is about $9,000 roughly. Um, and they have plans for how they're going to get that, um, largely from members of the bar, um, hopefully, um, is, is, a big part of the, is a big part of the hope. Um, right now, it appears that Mr. Mullen uh, will be able to join them um, uh, to go to New Orleans. It was a little bit uncertain, and he hasn't finally 100% committed himself because of the other things that he's got going, particularly with the Fringe Festival. Um, but it appears that he, he would be going uh, with them, and John and Elaine under and the kids understand that they knew, need, do need to have a teacher going with them, but it does appear that that would be the case now. Um, they would. There's two travel days um, that are listed there, and I don't know answers about specific hotels and how far that has gone, but I think John and Elaine can probably answer those if the board has any questions about those. Uh, it, is, it is two school days missed, um, um, but having sat through a couple of the mock trial um, um, competitions earlier this year and last year as well, I can attest to how academically valuable it is in terms of developing in, in kids the skill to stand in front of, in, in public, to think on their feet, um, and there's no question that supports the academic program and academic growth of our students. So I support it. I'm not sure if they win the state championship every year that I would necessarily support going uh, every single year, but these kids are kids who have, some of them <coughs> have been on the team for four years and have come very close four years, and I think it's uh, a recognition that uh, if the board can support, I think it would be well worthwhile for the kids. Jeff, um, are AP exams on either of those dates? And what um, do you know? 
Yes. Specifically? There are two AP exams, U.S. history and calculus. And I talked with the guidance department, and they gave me the alternate dates for oh, those okay. exams. Je will every student that was here tonight be going to this? No, one? maybe no. I can, John or Elaine, if you can. Um, what we're planning to do is to take 12 students with us. We gave the, of the students who were here tonight, not all of them, act, some of them were our, our backup team, some of them actually competed during the season. We offered everyone who competed during the season the opportunity to go to nationals if they were interested in working in their schedule. 12 students expressed interest, so we would like to Are there any other questions? I, I will say that on top of um, all the fundraising work that they have to do, my understanding is that the problem that the students work on with the coaches it doesn't get published nationally until, is it March or April? April. April. Um, and it's a problem that they have never seen before. So there is going to be a tremendous amount of work of just getting ready for these cases, which are very complex. complex. Mm. And it's quite a, quite a project ahead of them. Mm. Any other questions about that? Thank you. And now we can move on to the principal's reports. Um, Nancy? I'm sorry, did we take a No, no. Would, this would come back. The process is it comes to the board initially, and that's why I know is that Jeff was in a hurry to, to get it on the agenda this evening, um, mm -hmm. and the board will vote on it at the next meeting. Uh, tonight's purpose is to basically explain what the trip is, to get a sense if there are any concerns from the board, um, so that you would have a sense that you can go out and do your fundraising, and any questions that come up in the meantime between now and next month that the board might think of tomorrow or the next day, I'll make sure that they get to Jeff so that you'd be able to answer. Um, Should we not give these folks uh, sort of an expression of how we're feeling about it, mm -hmm. rather than require them to wait a month before they can begin their activities. Right, you take an official vote next month, but I think yeah, it's- But an informal- An informal okay. poll, yes. yes. That's, that's a good word, poll. Uh, and since I raised the issue, yes, I am absolutely in favor of allowing you to go ahead and do this and get your fundraising show on the road. I think it's great. I wish I could go. <laughs> I think it looks great, and thank you for helping these students. I, I, I think it's wonderful, and, and we have <coughs> one chaperone for every four, four students, so I, I think that works. I think it'd be wonderful. Good luck. I think it's a terrific opportunity, and it's been um, hard earned, and congratulations, and go and <laughs> do your very best. And thank to both of you for putting the time in that you do, uh, coaching the team. It's, it's really appreciated. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now Nancy from the middle school. Good evening. Um, first, I want to congratulate the mock trial team. I think that's great. It's fun as a middle school principal to sit here and see so many students um, that did go through the middle school uh, moving on and taking challenges and fulfilling those. So we certainly wish them good luck. Um, also, of course, tonight we're very proud of our I-team. Um, they are seventh graders at their best, and I want to give Tom a really good round of thanks here. He's still sitting here out there with his dad. He's um, finding the meeting very intriguing, I bet. So um, that's good. <laughs> thanks, Tom, for staying. <laughs> kind of thing. Well, of course, you know, in the middle school when you have two top-notch reporters who come every night and tell everything that's going on in the middle school, what is there left to say? So. Um, I will tell you that at, when Gary started his presentation with um, the little dig at the principals, we had a quick caucus, 
and Jeff and Tom and I have decided that if Gary would like to give a report every week, we would certainly stand aside. <laughs> and, uh, did I report that correctly, gentlemen? Thank you. Um, just a quick... <laughs> Just a quick reminder, we will be doing the um, California Achievement Test and the uh, main educational assessments um, throughout our school, March 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th. Um, it will be a four-day experience, and um, we will be doing those pretty much 7.50 to 10.30 in the morning, so we ask parents' support in trying to reroute appointments away from that time so we can work on that. Our um, students in grades five, six, and seven will be doing the California Achievement Test, and then eighth graders will be taking the second half of the MEAs. Our play this year, Elise and Elise, told you a little bit that it had been written by two parents and Steve Price, and what we really were looking for is a chance for middle school students to showcase some of their learnings. And so these are a group of little vignettes, and I've only skimmed through it, so um, kind of thing, but Hillary Egan gave me a copy the other day of the finished product Steve Price had shared a rough draft with me several weeks ago. One of the things I noticed all the way through it too that it, in each, pretty much each one of the vignettes is this part that says workshop and what they're going to do with the students as they do these little scenes and skits, songs and dances is the group working on that one will have a chance to work in a theater workshop to develop another part. It may be a song, it may be a dance, it may be dialogue, it may be combinations of both or knowing middle school students it could be all three. And I think that's a really great place where our theater group has come, that we're now at a point where we really need to sort of step back, and this will be live learning that people get to see. So it won't be the finished productions of The Wizard of Oz or um, Peter Pan, but it certainly will be, I think, a fine show, and students are pretty excited about doing that. Once again, I'd just like to thank the many um, community members who came to our career day. The biggest gift they give our middle school students is they all are passionate about what they do. And the message our students receive is find something to make it a career for your life and make sure it's something you enjoy and you like. And all of these people who come like what they do. And um, they, the students pick up on that right off. And they, by the time it's done, they've changed their career choices five or six <laughs> times in a day. And it's just wonderful. They're thinking beyond uh, the moment and also just hearing from people in their community how wonderful it is. The, Gary mentioned the Milty Project. Recently, Bev Bisbee, Gary, Holly Smevog, and I went to a training at the MBNA um, site in Northport. And they really are now trying to move with some of the Gates Foundation money as well um, to help us incorporate how you lead groups, how you help pe support people through change, how you come to some decisions. And at the conference as well were a lot of people from secondary schools because part of the charge of the Milty Project is also being about teaching and learning is to open up the dialogue between middle schools and high schools. And in some parts of our state, those two entities do not talk to one another except in disparaging ways. That I'm happy to report that is not our situation. Um, we have lively exchanges of different points of view sometimes, but we certainly talk to one another and work together, and we can learn from this project as well, too. But it was a very interesting workshop, and we picked up several um, different hints and strategies that we're already using um, with our groups. Sometimes we come before you and it's sort of like, so you've done that for a lot of years, and has anything changed? For many, many years, the eighth grade as part of the main studies program has gone to Augusta. And as Elise and Elise told you that the week after February break, they're going to go again. Now, throughout the years, we've looked at this project and we've really tried to change it once we get to Augusta, trying to work at it that way. But we always went, all of us, on the same day. Last year when they came back, the social studies teachers and language arts teachers said, wait a minute, this is not right. So they worked over the summer and also the day before Thanksgiving on a flex day. And this year we're going to go in three groups so that approximately two classes go, each two classes and a, little, and a third of another one um, go each time. Each time two of the teachers will go. Also in the eighth grade this year, all of our language arts teachers are also our social studies teachers. So that whole week they're doing an integrated work unit with social studies and language arts. Sarah Simmons is coming up and working with us some. Um, I'm gonna help out. They thought I would be able to lead a group reading, watching them read silently. I don't know why they gave me such a big task, but um, <laughs> anyway, I think I can do that. And um, they have uh, picked main writers that they're going to be looking at. 
they're going to incorporate that into their main study. So it's really one of those times when something we've always done, we thought, no, this is a good thing, but it's not resulting in the learning that we're looking for. And we think by taking smaller groups of students, of about 50 students each time, we'll be better able to manage and to conduct and guide them through the learning opportunities at the State House and at the State Museum. So um, hopefully later we'll have a follow-up report and tell you what we've learned this year and what refinements we might need to make in the future. And I think with the ladies and my report, that about wraps it up. But any questions? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Now we can move to Pine Cove. Tom? Good evening. I just wanted to bring you up to date on uh, what's been happening at Pine Cove recently. Xu Mei Wu, a visiting teacher from China, joined our staff last Monday. Mei, as she prefers to call herself, is part of the AFS Educator Program which allows distinguished educators to live and teach in countries around the world. Cape Elizabeth is the third main community that May has joined this year, so she's had a lot of practice and knows the American system pretty well. And she'll be pursuing goals, personal goals, learning about the country, and professional goals, learning more about her culture and sharing her knowledge of Chinese history, Chinese society, arts and crafts and skills. Although she teaches high school English back home, uh, May's experience in two ele elementary schools has helped her develop a repertoire of lessons and activities that she's going to be sharing with every grade level at Pond Cove. She'll be sp um, spending four days a week at Pond Cove, and we hope eventually when she gets settled down, she can also spend some time at the middle school and the high school. The whole school is very grateful to the Belden family, that's uh, May's host family, for arranging May to be with us. The um, second item on the international front, it was a surprise, but a pleasant surprise. We had the opportunity last month to have with us for a half a day a group of dancers from Japan who um, were practicing or getting ready for a traditional dance that they usually do outside in the streets in a, a town in northern Japan, about 50 miles from where I stayed in the fall. Uh, the dance was, is designed, it's usually done in late April, to um, awaken spring a little bit and uh, raise hopes for a successful fishing and harvest cycle. They arrived in the uh, middle of a cold snap, a big surprise, but, so that didn't exactly work. But it, aside from that, they had a, a great time. Uh, the kids enjoyed the show. They were very personable when they visited the classrooms. And thanks to Suzanne uh, Janelle, they managed to eat lunch with middle schoolers in the cafeteria. They, they, uh, I was a little sensitive about, about the amount of dirt and snow tracked in the school, because in Japanese schools, everybody takes their shoes off before they uh, come in. But they, they never mentioned to me they were too thoughtful when I pointed it out. Their attitude was very casual. They said, we have a lot of kids here, and I guess kids come in and out. So I was very impressed with their diplomacy. On the assessment accountability front that Nancy touched on again, yesterday a group of, um, I think it was about 60 or fewer <coughs> fourth graders sat for the National Assessment of Educational Progress test, about a 90-minute exam in uh, math and language arts. Pond Cove, because the amount of testing and assessment we do, has not participated in recent years, but Augusta has made it clear that in our state response to the No Child Left Behind legislation, it would be very helpful if uh, we participated and contributed to the data that Maine can present to Washington. We, um, we don't get statewide uh, school results back on this, uh, so the Ponco students' uh, results will be added to the mix, but we'll at least get the state report back on that. And uh, today, uh, due in large part to the interest and energy and enthusiasm, persistence of parent Kelly Delaquilla, all the third grade students and uh, their parents were invited to participate in an activity that involved uh, Hyde School, uh, students from the Hyde School, about 30 high school students, and um, I get her name right, Laura Gold, who co-director of the Hyde School and co-author of the book, The Toughest Job We'll Ever Have, through the, um, um, again, at the uh, organizational abilities of Kelly Delaquilla and the help of Pat Wright and uh, Karen Niehoff, her guidance counselors, the administrative support from Carmen Melito, help of Andy Strout at the middle school, 
and Kenny Lee's at the high school, we were able to pull off this character building workshop today. While the third graders were having their groups facilitated by the high school students and supervised by the teachers, 50 parents came to the meeting room at the uh, fire station for what I, I observed part of a very energizing discussion and activities around family values and parenting. And at the end of the day, they all gathered in the uh, Panko gym to share the results and to make a commitment to follow up on this. I'm really impressed that this was able to happen because as Tom mentioned, it's nice to keep our mission and vision alive. This fits very well with the goals of the uh, climate committee. And at the policy level, it, it brings to reality our commitment to have a realistic uh, code of conduct for our students. So thanks for everybody involved and in the support of uh, PCPA and other people who help fund it. And uh, finally, it's not very important, but we usually have a winner by now in the annual guessing game about when our first snow day is going to happen. But um, mm -hmm. I was making it awful tough because I don't think anybody has guessed no, none, ever. But uh, <laughs> kids want you to know there's still a chance. There's still a chance. <laughs> Any questions? Tom, how long will May be with you? Pardon me? How long will May be with She'll be, I'm sorry, to, I didn't mention that, till the, through the end of the school year. Oh, excellent. So, yeah, it's quite an opportunity for Great. us. Yeah. Is she in different classrooms every she, day? She will be. <coughs> um, she is um, attached to the Allied Arts team because that's the best way to get to learn the school. And at team leaders meeting tomorrow, we're going to come up with a schedule so that she'll be able to plug in her, uh, her skills. I don't know if any of you met her last week, but she's very energetic, very personable, and just, it's, it's a terrific opportunity for us. Okay. Any other questions for Tom? No? Okay, thank you, sure. Tom. Now we can move to the high school, Jeff. For anybody who gets a chance to see it, um, the Cape Insight, which is the newspaper, um, came out today and actually the lead headline is about the absence of snow days this year. And it <laughs> purports to be an objective piece, but my reading of it is that there is a definite slant to it um, and it is written by a senior um, and seniors are always the ones who most want to have snow days because they don't have to make them up at the end of the school year. So you might want to take a look at that. Um, Superintendent Purcell is quoted extensively um, and I'm glad to report that that's the subject and not some other things. Um, Aaron McKinney talked about uh, the Winterfest activities and I just wanted to uh, fill you in a little bit on that. It's a project that was really inspired by a group of students um, who met um, regularly uh, over the course of the last few months um, at 6, 6.45 in the morning uh, once a week. Um, and at first it, was, it seemed like a, a sort of a pipe dream to do something and there was a lot of skepticism about whether Cape Elizabeth High School students would really get into something that's, you know, sounds a little like it could be just some fun, um, just kind of good fun. Um, and in fact, they did. And it was a really, really, really pleasant surprise. Um, highlights were, Aaron mentioned the Iron Team Relay. And I just want to mention that um, Chris Owens um, motivated the seniors in literally a half an hour before the Iron Team Relay was scheduled to begin uh, to go home, get snowshoes, get a sled, and actually compete. Um, unfortunately for Chris, he was the lead leg on the uh, snowshoe competition and he had some very ancient pair of snowshoes which, uh, which sn one of them snapped within the first five seconds um, and the other one, um, the bindings broke within about five seconds thereafter so Chris had to literally run the entire leg uh, through about two feet deep snow at the time and he fortunately had some strong seniors coming up behind him and they made up the ground that he lost in that first leg, although the seniors did not win, but it was a valiant effort by Chris. It was a hotly contested hallway decorating con contest, which I never would have anticipated. Um, it was unbelievable to see what some of the kids produced. Um, it stunned me. You can still see some remnants of it uh, in the hallway even today if you were to come by. Um, the student-faculty basketball game was a lot of fun. The socks and mittens were wonderful inspiration. Uh, we did not have any major injuries to report. There were some very ungraceful falls, including one, and I don't think he's got a good sense of humor, including one by Tony Giudoni, one of our math <laughs> teachers, um, that caused me to hold my breath, uh, but nobody was injured. Uh, there were lots and lots and lots of missed shots by some very good, otherwise very good basketball <laughs> players, including Dr. Pasella's son, I believe. Um, there was a halftime pie eating contest. Um, and Sam Roos, who would have been here for the mock trial, except I'm sure that he's studying, 
who is the president of the software class, actually emerged as the champion um, over, among other people, Mr. Peary and Mrs. Brownell, who were representing the faculty, but not very proudly. <laughs> um, for me, the highlight of the whole Winterfest activities, and I think for many of the kids, was a uh, competition that was really inspired and organized and run virtually single-handedly by Scott, Scott Chair, P our phys ed, phys, phys ed teacher who just went above and beyond the call of duty. It was a three-on-three -three ice hockey competition. Um, the original inspiration was to flood the field in the back of the school and have it down there, but um, of the first thousand gallons that the fire department was kind enough to uh, pour in the back of the field, about 500 gallons ended up in the firefighters' faces. <laughs> um, and so it didn't make quite a consistent enough surface. So it was moved at the last minute to the Lions Field. Um, at the last minute, Scott realized that uh, the one light that's there light, did a nice job of lighting up one end of the ice hockey arena, but not the other. So he had the forethought, which I never would have had, to go and rent a generator um, at some rental outfit um, with a light um, and get some gasoline and stuff. And from 5 o'clock until 11 o'clock at night, um, I would estimate that a quarter to a third of the student body was there at some, for some or all or part, part of the evening. And the thing that was neat, it was, it was, I mean, the Cape Elizabeth High School's kids are kids who work under high expectations and I think, I think more stress than most kids do across the state. And it was just neat to watch them have just fun in a really low stress, low stakes competition. Some of the teams in the finals went at it pretty seriously. Uh, but even they had a lot of fun, and uh, it was just, just, just a, a great thing to watch. And there were a huge number of students across all grade levels, all social groups in the school, and everything else. It was really cool. Um, and the class of 2004, the junior class, would um, get very angry at me if I didn't report that they did win uh, the very beautiful and wonderful spirit trophy that we have gotten for them. And this, so the class of 2004 will be engraved on that trophy and then it'll be passed on from class to class as we continue the Winterfest activities, I hope. Um, senior transition project is underway. The seniors have been very nicely threatened, as they were last year as well, that they need to get a certain quota. I think it's 80 to 85% of students presenting at least preliminary plans by early March. And if they don't do that, um, then we will not do senior transition project. We say that not because we want to do away with it, but because we want it to be as well organized as possible. We did make a similar very kind threat last year, and it seemed to really energize the students, and I think it's having that same effect right now. So I think that will be a success. Um, the scheduling process is underway this year. Nancy mentioned that there are positive conversations that happened between the middle school and the high school. We got our department chairs together with eighth grade teachers yesterday. Uh, to kick off that process, the um, course of the study guide is going to press over the February break. Uh, we have advanced by several weeks to a month, um, actually, a lot of the deadlines in the connection with the sign-up process, and in part, that's an effort to try to be able to generate earlier numbers so that our course sign-up and master scheduling happens a little bit more in line with the budgeting process because those numbers will be helpful to all of us as we sort of think through what our needs are as a high school. Um, for those of you who can take any time, there is a jazz festival at Cape Elizabeth High School on Thursday, two days from now. It uh, goes from 3 o'clock until 9 o'clock on Thursday evening. <coughs> if you'd like to drop in at any time, you see some uh, bands from across the state, including Cape Elizabeth High School's um, five-time award-winning Berkeley um, Jazz Ensemble, which is a wonderful band. Um, and I'm just going to end very quickly with a comment on learning results. Um, we are spending a good amount of time recently trying to define exactly what the system will look like to support kids who are going to struggle in meeting the learning results, which is the new graduation requirement, beginning with, with math and English for this year's eighth graders when they come to the ninth grade. Um, and I think we're getting closer to defining the kinds of things that we want to be in a position to offer to students. Um, we had most recently a representative from Renaissance Learning attend a recent department chair meeting and present some of the software that they um, use or uh, have developed. Um, it's a company that's been around for a good many years. It's created programs called Accelerated Math, Reading, and Writer. It's used in a whole lot of places. Um, and right now, uh, one of the Accelerated Math programs is being piloted by Charlotte Hanna, one of our math teachers, in the pre-algebra course that she teaches. And um, Charlotte reported to the department heads um, and has talked to me extensively in the math department about what she is finding to be a very successful use of that program, thanks to the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation. Um, and 
the key to that program is it provides instant feedback to students about how they're doing with respect to specific skills and it allows the teacher to be working with kids on this on, with either one kid or tiny groups of kids who have common skills deficits on those particular skills while the other kids are working on very individualized assessments to see how they're doing and sort of move their skills along so it may very well be that that software uh, will become one important component of a program that will present to the school board along with the budget process any questions Jeff, have uh, you gotten a visit from the uh, head of the biotech department over at PASS? Um, there is a visit this week, I believe, that the science team, the science, I'm not sure if it's happened yet, Kevin, but it's this week. Um, he's meeting with the entire science department. I just wanted to convey their administration's appreciation to you and to the science faculty for the opportunity. I will pass that along. Thank you. Um, and now we'll move on to the committee reports, the finance um, subcommittee. Elaine? Uh, yes, um, we met uh, at uh, 7 o'clock prior to our school board meeting this evening. Uh, we did sign warrants, and Pauline did share with us some information regarding our unemployment rate and uh, the fact that we would be getting uh, some money back from that. Uh, the rate will stay the same next year, and we did receive um, about $4,000 less than we did last year, but it, it, we did get some money back from that fund. Uh, she also reported that there was no news from the state at this point regarding our uh, GPA. Uh, there was an informational letter from the commissioner uh, that promised it by, well, promised, but said that we would be getting some sort of information as a printout by Friday, the 14th. Um, I know that um, most of us do know that the governor has um, said that there would be a 1% increase uh, with about a $3 million uh, cushion. So we'll be looking for that uh, printout sometime Friday. <coughs> then we did have a, a discussion regarding some information that um, uh, came our way regarding per pupil expenditures. Uh, there is a, a printout from I believe it's the main department of education and um, they gave us some figures in regards to as i said the per pupil expenditures and we compared ourselves with other k-12 school systems with 500 or more students and in 1995 1996 cape elizabeth was eighth out of the 117 school systems it's all K-12 student uh, districts. Five, okay, and then the the figures as they go down start. I could take you through the figures, but 96, 97th we rose to um, well, we actually fell to 13th, 97, 98th, 16. Um, by the year of 0102 we were the 48th school out of the 117 schools as regards to per pupil expenditures um, if you were to take the 12 schools in the cumberland county in which we frequently compare ourselves to uh, in 95 96 we were a second out of the 12 schools and in 0102 we were about in the middle of the the grouping at around at, at the seventh um, this brought us forth a discussion uh, regarding the, <coughs> the level of financial effort that the town is putting behind uh, our education budget. Um, we're being on part of the school board, we all pretty much are, recognize the commitment that everyone from our parents and teachers and administrators uh, put forward into our, our, our education budget. But we really will be looking at getting a better feel from our community as to how much financial effort they want to put behind our budget. And um, we anticipate that we'll, we'll be looking at that very closely as we develop this budget, in addition to working within some of the parameters that town council is looking from us. So I just wanted to share that with everybody. I think the important piece, too, is <clears throat> the trend that we're seeing um, over the last seven or eight years, where Cape Elizabeth um, you know, ranks very high in the state, one of the top school districts in the state of Maine. Um, in an academic sense, 
but what we're finding is that the amount of money we're spending per pupil has fallen dramatically from seven or eight years ago when compared to the hundred and seventeen k twelve districts in the state of maine to fall from number eight to number forty eight and all those steps you can just follow them down it's quite dramatic and it's something that i know in a tight budget year may not be able to be addressed because i know all towns in maine are faced with the same issue but i think it's something that we need to keep in mind because it looks as if to be honest that we're not putting the effort in financially that the towns around us are putting into their into their into their schools elaine if you don't mind i'd just like to add that we've had uh... we've been told on more than several occasions through a main municipal association report that we are number one in per capita spending for education and this contrasts at the face of that that sounds very impressive until you compare that to the information that was just reported so please don't be deceived by the fact that people are quoting that we are um, number one in per capita spending when in reality we are number forty three in per pupil spending <coughs> Thank you. Um, we can move on to the policy subcommittee. Susan? Um, the committee met on um, February 5th, and there really isn't a lot for me to report tonight. Most of the work done um, during that meeting was done on the um, Student Code of Conduct, which is a group of policies that we're looking at as a group. However, we did put together a worksheet, and I passed it out to um, school board members prior to this meeting, um, which is going to be a vehicle for tracking the work on those policies that will be delivered to this group at some point between now and the end of the year to look at, just so that you can see where we are, progress against plan. So that's an addendum to what we've been doing as far as trying to keep you informed of the work as we do it in committee. Um, and we will be meeting, as far as we know, we're meeting March 5th again at noon. However, there was a discussion at the last meeting that might change to um, move to a, a longer, more consolidated meeting so we can push our way through these policies to make sure that we get them done in plenty of time for this group to, to look at them and um, provide feedback on that. So we'll, if, if the time does change, we'll make public notice of that between now and then appropriately. Okay. Thank you, Susan. Um, we have no unfinished business to report, so we'll move on to new business. Um, and the first item is the superintendent's recommendation for athletic fee positions. You have in front of you a number of um, positions at the middle school and at the high school, uh, and I'd like to just read through them. Uh, returning middle school recommendations be Chris Brunette, middle school swimming, Joe Doan, middle school indoor track, Jeremy LaRose, Middle School Indoor Track, David Kinsella, Assistant Indoor Track. Returning high school coaches, Joe Hendrickson, Varsity Softball, Bill Rabadou, Assistant Softball, Sam Coughlin, JV Softball, Ben Raymond, Varsity Boys Lacrosse, Charlie Carroll, Assistant Boys Lacrosse, Andy Strout, Boys Tennis, Ben Putnam, Assistant Boys Tennis, Susan Ray, Girls Tennis, um, Is it? I can't. My, I'm Jamin. just blurred on my sheet. Jamin Mooney, assistant girls tennis. Stephanie McClarty, varsity girls lacrosse. Sarah Jordan, JV girls lacrosse. And Jeremy LaRose, girls track. And recommendations for new high school coaches David Weatherby, boys track. And Mort Soul, varsity boys baseball. Do we have a motion? Um, Elaine? I move that we accept it, superintendent's recommendations for the high school coaching uh, positions for the spring. And a second? Kathy? Okay, all in favor? Six, zero. Move on to the uh, recommendation for a co-curricular fee position. That is Sarah Collins uh, as art club advisor at the high school. Can we have a motion? There was another one added. 
Another co-curriculum? Yeah. The freshman class advisor. And we also have a freshman class advisor, Gretchen McNulty. Kevin? I move that we accept the superintendent's uh, recommendations for co-curricular activities, fee positions. Okay. Second? Jennifer? Okay. All those in favor? Six zero. And um, the next item, our administrator nomination, and by um, we are required to nominate administrative positions uh, before March 1. Obviously, these are all contingent upon um, budget deliberations. Um, but if all goes well, we will continue to have these wonderful people working with us. If you notice, there is um, a, not a position uh, for an assistant principal at Pond Cove, and that is because in the budget process, um, that we, will, we will be, through Tom Eismeyer, presenting um, sort of an alternative structure for administration. That's why that position is, is missing due to the retirement of Carmen Melito. Um, so I'll read off the list. Tom Eismeyer, Pond Cove School Principal, Nancy Hutton, Middle School Principal, Jeffrey Shedd, High School Principal, Assistant Principals John Casey, the Middle School, Mark Tinkham at the High School, District-wide Positions, Claire LeBrie, Director of Special Education, Pauline Portia, Business Manager, Gary Lenoy, Technology Coordinator, Sarah Simmons, facilitator of professional development and curriculum, Keith Weatherby, Point 75 athletic administrator, and Sue Weatherby, community services director. Okay. Can we have a motion to accept Kevin? I move that we accept the superintendent's nominations for administrative positions. Okay. Um, second? Kathy? All in favor? Six, zero. Thank you. Thank you to all the administrators for another great year. And lastly, um, there is a request for uh, an additional year of unpaid leave of absence for child rearing. Um, we do have a precedent for this that we have um, in the past uh, supported um, a second year. Um, I don't think we've ever gone beyond that, um, but this is a request for a second year of uh, child rearing by. Um, Sarah Carroll. Do we have a motion to accept this um, unpaid leave of absence? Kathy? I move that we accept uh, Sarah's request for a second year of unpaid leave of absence. Okay, second. Susan? All those in favor? Six, zero. So I, I would just like to, before we um, terminate this meeting and go into executive session, I'd just like to run through um, all of um, our dates for future meetings. Um, school board workshop on Tuesday, February 25th at 7 o'clock um, in the high school library. School board workshop um, on Saturday, March 1st um, here in the council chambers. That will be our first presentation of the um, budget. Policy subcommittee uh, Wednesday, March 5th at 12 noon, unless it is changed, as Susan said. Um, the finance subcommittee meeting March 11th at 6.30. Um, and our next regular school board meeting, 7.30, um, the same day, March 11th, at, here in the council chambers. And now if we could have a motion to exit public session, and we need a motion to go into executive session. To discuss, we get to see what's I'm sorry? We don't have a work? Yeah. Oh, I didn't. Didn't that was the first one, February 25th. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and our executive session is to discuss the superintendent's evaluation. Can we have a motion to move that we enter an executive session? To say, okay, <laughs> to um, discuss superintendent's evaluation. Okay. Second? Jennifer? All those in favor? Six zero. Okay, thank you.